I was at the local charity shop the other day and found amongst the toasters and the kettles this book. Dick Smith, Funway into Electronics, Volume 1. The $6 price tag made it hard to resist. Not only was it a book, but also all the parts were there. Project kits for beginners into electronics. I did a previous video talking about Funway in more detail. But basically, it was a beginner's do-it-yourself kit for people learning electronics. Funway 1 had no soldering and just a board that you'd use screws to mount the various components. Funways 2 and 3 were more advanced, involving soldering and printed circuit boards. If you want more on that, then watch my other video that I'll link below. Today, I'll go through the Funway 1 book and put together some of the projects. This is not the original cover design. This I think dates from the 1990s or even the 2000s. But the content and all the words is pretty much all the same as it was when it was written in the late 70s. Now it comes in a plastic bag. Now this is not original. I don't remember Dick Smith selling it quite in this format. These often came with the book separately and you could get bags with the parts for projects 1 to 10 then another bag with the parts for projects 11 to 20. However, you can see that some of the components, in fact it looks like all of the components are still in the packaging contained within the bag. So we'll take a look inside. You can also see just through here there's a blue circuit board. Anyway, we'll get a better view if we take off all this wrapping and have a look and see what you get in a Funway 1 kit. I know that Americans in particular seem to like selling unbuilt kits on the web. There's a bit of guilt I suppose in taking this apart as it will no longer be an unbuilt kit but this is not the original packaging so my guilt on that is slightly less. Anyway we've got the bag open Now these bags do not look like the original Dick Smith Funway bags. But there are two of them, including a 9 volt battery. I'll have to do the tongue test and see if it's still alive. book a little bit bent looks like it's been out in the Sun yet yeah, copyright 2001 but if we look at in fact that's that's one thing that um, I think is missing from the original the original had an introduction at the front from Dick Smith himself Dick Smith no longer owned Dick Smith Electronics at the time, so that's possibly why it's not there. The rest though, the getting started and all these, this is just like what was in the original Funray book. Uh, first of all, it describes the various components, what they do, and their schematic symbols. All this is exactly the same, all the pictures, graphics, exactly the same as the 1979 or thereabouts book. So we'll build some of these projects and see if they work. And then there's a bit on electronics theory and uh, a glossary of terms. Now, in the back here are a selection of paper cutouts and you'd cut these out and stick them to your wooden board and that would tell you where all the parts went. Anyway, one has been cut out already. 
So, I think someone has built one project in this and possibly lost interest. And then many years later, put it into bags and donated it to the Salvos, where I got it for $6. So, that I think is the provenance of this particular kit. I don't think they have packed things as they were. Um, certainly not using the original bags. Anyway, we'll take... Um, okay, the most striking thing is this blue board. Oh look, looks like they, they have glued a continuity indicator thing to it. So they've obviously started, that's the first project. So I'll build the continuity indicator and see if it works. There's also a bit of paper here. Um, oh, erratum. Due to wide variation in transistor gain, some transistors may not work. In this case, reach a select, uh, suggest connecting an extra capacitor. Okay. A bit coil modification because there are different versions of components at the various times. So um, that just explains all that. And what else did we get? A quality control card. We want all our kits to look so good your friends won't believe you built them. If you do encounter any construction problems, please assist us in our quality... Con okay, so... Please affix stamp here. So they didn't even pay for the postage. Anyway, that's to Dick Smith Electronics Kit Department. Of course, that doesn't exist. Dick Smith Electronics doesn't really exist. Crystal earpiece. Now, that by itself is probably worth almost as much as the $6 that I bought the kit for. So maybe I'll build a crystal set. Um, an 8 ohm, yeah, C222, that is the uh, 8 ohm speaker that's used in some of the projects. I won't, won't open it, but just the normal speaker. Um, variable resistor. A few parts. Oh, what's this? A note, little, another little note. Capacitors, metallized polyester, so it explains uh, green caps are slowly becoming a thing of the past, so they're now going to these high-tech boxed type polyesters known as MKTs. So they're the yellow little box capacitor things. So yep, they'll work fine. And there's a few other bits and pieces. This is other note. So you could see that the way that things changed since from the late 70s to the 2000s, they had to put all these little notes in the kits explaining why. Uh, here we are, power died. We may supply a 1N4004 instead of a 1N4002 mentioned in the parts list. Uh, yep, about the same. No worries there. And what's this other thing? Um, now this is... Oh, customers please note, you may be supplied with the MK484 Radio IC. Yes, the old one, the old kit used the ZN414, which was in a metal can. Anyway, the MK484, which I featured in some of my other videos, it looks just like a normal transistor, um, not a metal can, plastic case. Anyway, there's a little note for that, and just on top you might be able to see the light-dependent resistor. We have, oh, these are all the goodies, the ferrite rod, just here, and the coil. That's definitely worth the purchase price. And a transformer, 8 ohm to 1k. Um, and a variable capacitor. Who would have thought that you could just go to a charity shop and just by accident find variable capacitors? But there it is. And we have various little screws down here and LED. Looks like it's been connected and screwed in so someone at least attempted the project 9 volt battery tongue test time yep definitely some life in it so no problems there found all the parts for the continuity indicator they obviously did build it as you can see from some of the leads they are bent
Well, we're nearly finished. Didn't take long at all. Our completed continuity tester. Now imagine the joy of someone's first electronic circuit. They've put it together and instant success. Though I suspect more often than not, there'll probably have been a mistake. Maybe the LED was the wrong way around. And so it didn't work and they'd have to learn to troubleshoot it. Probes were somewhat improvised, they just used some thicker, it's not even heat shrink, but anyway, it provides a bit of thickness to the wire, so I suppose if you glued it then there would be better probes. But it at least proves that the circuit works. So that's project one, funray one, volume one, the LED continuity indicator. If you'd like to see other projects, then let me know and I'll do more videos. In the meantime, make sure you watch my earlier video on a bit more background of Dick Smith Funway into Electronics. Over 40 years later, there's another very similar book and projects available from JCAR. That's called Short Circuits. So you might want to refer people to that if they're interested in electronics and want something simple and solderless to start off with.